Hey everybody, this is Retro Gaming Ninja. How's it going tonight? I am back with a trying to fix it video. What we got tonight is the Sega Nomad that I picked up recently. Let me show you guys what it's doing. I don't have a power supply, but if you plug in AC, nothing. But if you put a little, power, a little pressure on it, sorry, a little bit of pressure makes it go on and off. So that's telling me that there might be a loose um, a loose power jack. So let's see if we can get that fixed tonight. So on the back of the Genesis on the Nomad, you got five screws. Let's get up to it. I need a longer screwdriver. These screws are recessed in here. They're good. Probably down in there about that far. So one screwdriver helps, and if I'm not mistaken, this one might be a security bit. I think it may be. Let me grab my security bits. Let's see. Yep, that's a security bit. So you're going to need your security driver, security bit driver. to the side. Open them up. Be careful because there are ribbon cables in here. Right here. So slide this down. I just use my fingernail. Not much to it. And pull him out gently. Now we can set this to the side because this does not have our power jack on. Here's our power jack right here, and as you can see, it is kind of loose in there. I'm wondering if I need a whole new power jack, but let's see what we got. Looks like one, two, three, four, maybe four, five, six, Seven, maybe. Let's see. Yes. Now, I have not recapped this board or modified the screen, which may be something I'll do in the future. But right now, I just wanted to get to work with just the power jack on. Alright, so I'm not going to remove these two because that's what holds the screen. I do need to remove this guy here, which you should just pull out. Let's do it down here. There. And our board should come out except for your speaker right here. You gotta take that out as well. This is my first time working on a Nomad, so you'll have to forgive me. So there you go. Put that to the side. Here's our power. And our power switch. So what we're looking at is probably a bad, a weak solder joint. That pin seems to be okay in there. So I don't think that's the problem. 
But what we'll do is we're going to touch up. If we look, there's one here, one there, and one on there. So there should be three. So one, two, and three right there. So we're going to touch those three up with the soldering iron. Trying to not get this cable here anywhere near the soldering iron because that's our LCD screen. So it might be best if we just unplug it. Well, maybe, maybe not. Alright, well, I can't get that out of there, so we'll go at it and try not to get these cables anywhere near the soldering iron. I'm going to slide them up over the edge and kind of tuck them back here out of the way for now. Alright, so we're going to be soldering right here. See if you can get it, see if my camera will focus on this. So what we're looking at is going to be this post, this post, and that post. Man, my camera does not want to focus tonight. Alright, well let's do manual. There we go. That might help you guys out a little bit. Alright, soldering iron is hot. Let's get some solder. So I'm out back, I'm outside in the garage working on my in my uh my work desk here. So if you hear traffic or you hear rain or anything like that, that's probably what you're hearing. So I'm going to put a little pressure on it that way when I warm the solder up. It pops back into place. Okay. That one leaves a little solder I think. Pressure. A little solder. A little pressure, a little solder, a little pressure, a little solder. Try to pull a bit more on that one side. Okay, let's give that a try. Clean your soldering iron up. Make it safe. All right. Let's put our board back in. Make sure we put our gray cable. Let me zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing now. Take our gray cable back over that corner now. Like it was, so it's out of the way. Okay. Don't forget your power power switch. Right. The speaker's gonna plug in here, and we set her down in there, nice and flat. Okay. Now. The thing with the Nomad is that the cartridge reader is on this piece, so you have to hook this piece in to even test it. So we're going to put a couple screws in and then we're going to go from there.
So it's nice and cool here in Texas where I live. And it's later in the afternoon, so the light's not real great in the work area here. Let's make sure we plug this cable back in. Right here. Like so. Then we're going to plug that key ribbon back in. Just lay it down. Carefully slide it up in there. Make sure your gate's all the way open. That gate's all the way open, that ribbon cable should just go right in there. Give it a nice little push, like so. Let's close that gate up. Alright, now we're going to lay it back down in its case. And I'm not going to put the back screws in just yet, I'm going to test real quick. Game. Sega Power Supply, power. Oh, I got no power at all. Uh oh. So what did I do? So see, um, something's wrong, so now I have to figure out what the heck's wrong. Okay, ribbon cable looks fine, that looks fine, that's fine. This is in. I think that's plugged in. Back together, let's try again. There we go. Ah, uh -huh. so that tells me. And we put that solder on there. It tells me we just have a bad power jack. So I'm going to have to buy a power jack. So one thing I don't want to do is keep putting pressure on it. But it does work. I just got to figure out how to pick up a power jack. All right, guys. Well, until next time, I will call this an end to this video, and then I will re revisit it once I get a power jack uh, to replace this one with. As you can tell, the screen is nice and bright. Yeah. And the sound is good. So, looking forward to finally fixing this. So we'll go online. We're going to try to order a DC power jack because this one may have a faulty in center pin in there. So we're going to see if we can find one and I'll come back.